Today we're doing a engine service on a 2011 turbo diesel V8 Land Cruiser. Uh, what we're going to do is the engine service, uh, <coughs> replace the filter, check the front and rear diffs, check the oil in the manual gearbox and in the transfer case, as well as have a bit of a check underneath and and possibly uh, just check the filters, the air filters. Making sure the vehicle's all safely jacked up, or we're, we're doing it on a hoist here, so um, we've cleaned around the plug and blown the air out. Uh, 14 mil uh, socket to loosen it. Make sure you've got an adequately sized container to catch all the fluid that's or the oil that's coming out. We'll just take the oil out. Just be careful not to burn yourself. And there we go. Well, straight into the container. We're going to check the uh, diff oil levels, which uh, this is the front diff. And take off this plug and just make sure that you can just touch the oil level. Uh, that then over here on the gearbox, we've got the the higher plug. Just nip that off and do the same. Just make sure the oil is reaching to the bottom of the plug hole. The transfer case, which is here, um, we're going to take the the plug out and do the same. And at the rear diff, we're going to do the same. You notice it's uh, limited slip diff oil in the diffs. Um, now, I've just noticed on these that the universal joints do have grease nipples. You can see where my finger is there. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty dark. And there's one on the, this is the rear tail shaft. You've got your front tail shaft, which has got universal joints as well. We'll have a look on the steering linkages and just make sure sometimes these ball joints have a little grease nipple. If they do have them, we will grease them. If they don't, they're a sealed unit and don't need greasing. Also, uh, we'll just check on these knuckles here that um, there's no oil dripping out. It's got a little bit of oil, uh, grease there, sorry, um, which is okay. If if they do have oil, it means that the seal inside's um, gone and we need to sort of uh, mention that to the customer and possibly uh, replace the seals in there. Okay, about nine litres um, of oil came out of that, nine or ten litres. So now we're going to take off where the filter sits under here. And what we just use is a, a rag over a pair of giant multi grips and we can just undo that that's on a seal so it, it doesn't have to be very tight to seal it's just got a rubber seal there so you can um, a lot of people think you have to buy a special tool to get these off but they're not very tight generally and you just just careful to we use these big multi grips um, put a rag on it just so it doesn't damage the housing it looks a little bit more professional and they're not they sh generally they're not very tight you can see I'm just turning that off slowly with my hand um, I'll put the camera down and and take it out there we go see the filter element in there just make sure it's all nice and clean before you start removing anything off off the engine just so that muck doesn't go back inside when you're putting the, the fresh one on this element just pops out and we'll replace it with the new one and just give it a bit of time for that oil to drip drip out when we're taking the bottom sump plug off we actually 
on our hoist um, we have these we can lock in these and we tilt the tilt the car back a bit just to get a little bit more oil coming out now we're going to go ahead and uh, replace the, the filter um, this little unit here I think is a bypass valve if it gets blocked up it's spring loaded so it uh, one it pushes up where it should locate in the motor hard and also if if that filter does become blocked it'll actually pu push up along the spring I believe and uh, just by let the oil circulate so it doesn't seize up we're going to replace this little o-ring here that comes with the filter kit and uh, there's the o-ring there when you tighten just tighten it right up but the rubber sort of it seals pretty well and we'll go ahead and do that um, this unit here when you're putting it on I don't know if you can see in there just twist into those slots so you put it in and clockwise um, turn and it'll go into where it should locate there we have a little tube we've replaced it replaced the o-ring and we just pop the filter back on there and you can see if you push it down it will actually move so it's like a safety feature the oil will if it becomes completely blocked up uh, the oil pressure will push it down and let the oil circulate around you're usually in a lot of trouble if if this filter gets blocked up it means you're you're having serious problems or you really haven't done the servicing regularly now these kits um, before anyone asks what the other o-rings for um, I believe they're a universal kit um, I've never had to replace one but this plug in the middle there I think it's designed for those plugs that are removable um, I think maybe in the United States they they can um, have that additional o-ring there but on these you just basically need that, that o-ring there and the filter we've cleaned the housing a little bit um, we use newspaper make sure it's a newspaper that won't come to pieces when you um, wiping it in there because there are little sharp edges and you can see the little tube inside there that locates on the other side of the filter anyway we just place that in there and slowly do it up till the o-ring approaches the groove and then we just slowly do it up it'll get pretty hard and we do it right up until it bottoms out on the housing you don't have to overdo it though okay we're doing the front just checking the oil level on the front diff it's a 15 16 or 24 mil socket we just undo it after we've cleaned it all nicely and blown it out with air so no rubbish goes inside we also wire brush them before we take them off yeah you can see there's no magnet on the plug and we just stick our finger in there and you can see there's a little bit of oil there it is a little bit low I like it to to seep out a little bit which I think you can see it's doing now slowly um, it just tells you that that's the oil level anyway we can clean that plug off just do it with one hand And put the plug back on always put them on by hand first otherwise you might strip the thread and tighten it up same procedure with the, the gearbox loosen the plug it's the same size head on the bolt 15 16 of an inch or 24 mil you can see the little aluminium washer make sure you don't lose that because that's what seals it some have a you can see the oil just dripping out now now that that level oil level is how I like it so we'll just pop the plug back in
hands a bit of a wipe. Always a good idea to keep your hands clean because you don't get all muck over all the tools and everything and also the safety aspect, your hands will be slipping off everything and we just tighten it up a little bit. Here we've got the oil level plug on the transfer case, we've just loosened it. And you can see it's even probably a little bit over full, but I like it when it's like that, the oil's just coming out. And tighten it back up like normal. And finally the rear diff. Now we've just got to do the same thing. And you can see the oil's just starting to weep out so that, that oil level is correct. Do it back up. And I'll just grab a rag and clean off that excess oil. And we'll go on to the universe, uh, the universal joints and the grease nipples. Now you can see the grease nipple is one here that lubricates the splines where this moves up and down on. And there's another one, if you can see it, just in there on the universal joint. Now sometimes it's a bit hard to reach them. So what I do is I just place a screwdriver over a rag. Um, important to give them a good clean externally before you pump the grease in or you could be great pumping the, the road dirt and whatever into it which is not a good idea good for the mechanics but not good for the owner now I'll just go and clean this is on the rear tail shaft um, the front and rear one there's no splines on this so it hasn't got it and on the front tail shaft from the transfer case to the front diff they've got the same you can see the grease nipple that lubricates the splines there you can see how much that moves um, that one's easy to rotate because it's not locked in um, where else have we got them uh, on this steering bar here um, we've got a grease nipple here you just sometimes they're a bit sneaky and hard to see but if you get a torch and have a look generally you'll you'll find them all yeah see there's a bit of grease coming out of that there so around the seal these these knuckles here are a sealed unit and we'll just uh, put the camera down and clean them up and pump a bit of grease into them now yeah, we've got the engine down, or the vehicle down. Um, over here we've got the the clutch uh, slave cylinder, or master cylinder, and the slave cylinder is the one that's activated. Um, on older vehicles, it's actually wiser to take the cap off than to just look through like that, because what happens, um, as the plastic ages, the fluid can actually stain the plastic, and you think you've got enough there but it's actually too low so you check the brake fluid the same you can give it a little bit of a wobble and you see if it's if the lines moving it's usually a good indicator um, we're going to just pop off the um, air filter here and just blow it out in reverse um, the air actually comes in through the bottom so we're going to blow it from the top down um, blow it out any bugs or grasshoppers that are in there and we're just going to check the coolant level um, on the battery if the battery has um, plugs on it where you can actually top it up with water important to not overfill it because the, the batteries do um, warm up um, one from the engine and and another from the use and the the electrolyte in them will expand a little bit so if you fill it right up to the top you'll get that um, oxidizing 
or the acidic water running all over everything corroding things so make sure you just there'll be like a little plastic um, level in there important not to go over that um, the intercooler filter will probably just blow it out there's a few little grasshoppers here and then we'll uh, proceed with oh, the power steering as well power steering because uh, it's hydraulic and like an automatic transmission um, you check the oil level when it's at operating temperature because again the oil will expand a little bit um, and with the motor running that way um, you know that all the oil's in in all the little places where it should be um, that's probably about it um, you can top up the uh, the washer bottle um, on the diesel another thing I forgot to mention um, on the on the diesel fuel line there should be a little drain plug for um, water or condensation you can just um, let that out if there's any water in there uh, on this one we're not doing a full service we're just doing a minor service so the fuel filters um, we're not going to worry about anyway we're going to apologies for uh, not being able to film and work all the time um, can't do it with one hand and film and after we're going to just uh, get a funnel and top up the engine oil in here now they the, the book says it takes about nine liters of uh, oil and we've bought a uh, the recommended oil which is the Penrite 10w40 the semi-synthetic fluid no oil and I recommend putting a funnel in there some people don't um, yeah, it depend, depends on, on your skill of getting the oil in, in that little little hole there. So, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, I mainly use a, a funnel, but uh, occasionally I don't. Doesn't look like the air filter's been off for a while. So what we do, the, the hose isn't very flexible because it's pretty short. So I always like to to leave as much length because you'll get the flexibility to get it off the rubber was pretty well stuck on there so I just loosened ran a screwdriver there just to slowly um, loosen it and wriggle it left and right of course keep it all clean before you take it off and we just pop the air filter off and you can see it looks pretty clean this is the top side where um, the engine side basically on the bottom side you'll see it has got a bit of dust in there it's not too bad though um, we'll just blow take this little felt off and blow the air in from the engine side out filters not too bad um, we'll just blow out here if you notice right here where the the air gun is there's a little hole that's to let any water out if there's any water coming through so make sure that's not plugged up with leaves or dirt from underneath um, otherwise you might end up filling this up and sucking oil into the inlet manifold Make sure there's no rubbish going in there. There is a little bit. You can see a little bit, bit of carbon as I just scratch there with my finger. Anyway, we'll put the air filter cover back on and top it up with engine oil. One thing I forgot to mention, um, the air filter hose here, they do sometimes get cracks in there. Um, if that happens, what what usually occurs it'll be sucking air um, in front of the filter not not be behind it so or the other way around behind the filter not in front of the filter um, and you'll be sucking all that uh, dirty air um, so just make sure you just sort of wriggle that hose around while it's off and just make sure there's no cracks or anything in it like that um, 
the hoses as well they'll have a little arrow stamped on them and that's usually pointing to another arrow or a little locating lug here that just stops everything from wriggling left and right um, when you're blowing out the intercooler um, instead of just blowing straight down you'll end up blowing the the debris straight into the cooler so what I actually do is I go on a bit of an angle um, so the air actually hits the the um, flat bits in there and it'll throw out um, whatever's in there instead of pushing it straight in so you can see it's sort of flipping out a bit of stuff you might have to might have to pull it out by hand um, there's a few sticks and leaves in there that won't wriggle out Anyway, we'll finish that off and then we can actually fill it up with oil. Okay, now we're just going to reset the oil reset button. So, Australia, so it's Asia. And what has it got here? To reset the oil system, switch the display to meter A when the motor is running. To reset the oil system, turn the engine start stop switch to off. To reset the oil change system while pressing the trip meter reset button. Set the engine start stop switch to ignition on, but do not start the engine because otherwise the reset mode will be cancelled. Continue to press the hold the button until the multi information display indicates that it is complete. Alright, now we'll just go ahead and do that. Now we've just topped up the oil, or put a bit of oil in, a um, little bit less than what was needed. Um, it's a lot easier to top it up than to take a little bit out. Um, when you're checking the oil, just wipe the dipstick off and we're just you can see it's just a little bit below the the top mark so we'll just top that up a little bit more there we go that's uh, service on a Land Cruiser 200 series uh, 12 month 2011 uh, I think it's a 4.5 litre turbo diesel